Hey there, welcome back to She Speaks Life. Hey, did you know that you could see this episode and other episodes live on my YouTube channel? If you go to Jamie Elizabeth She Speaks Life, make sure you subscribe so you get the newly released episodes as they come. And you can hop onto my website, jamieelizabeth.com, and I will give you a free gift. It is an ebook called God's ID, My ID. ID that talks all about God's characteristics and how they apply to your life today. Okay, with me today is my guest, Sandra Bird. She is a gifted writer of fiction and nonfiction and has recently published a devotional with Our Daily Bread called Dwell, 90 Days at Home with God. We talk about how God dwells in us and how we dwell in Him as believers in Christ and how we can always enjoy His security, love, and companionship right where we are. Sandra shows us beautifully how to discover an experience with Jesus that brings us closer to Him and makes us feel right at home. And I love this conversation so much, and I know you will too. So let's nestle in. Here's my guest, Sandra Bird. Hi, Sandra. Welcome to She Speaks Life. I'm so excited you are here with us today. I'm excited to be here too. Thank you for inviting me into your digital living room. (laughs) Yeah, I am excited about this message that you're going to deliver about God's dwelling in us and us in Him. And it's just beautiful. You wrote a gorgeous devotional called Dwell 90 Days at Home with God. And before we dive into that and find out more about you, I love to ask each guest what their favorite scripture verse is and why. You know, I think my favorite, as it were, would probably be rotating a little bit just because the word is living and active. And every time I pick it up, something new jumps out for that day, for that heart. So I don't know that I have an all time favorite, but one of my most favorites is Hebrew 11, 6, which is, and without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards Mm -hmm. those who earnestly seek him. The the reason this is one of my all-time favorites is because so often I just want God to change the circumstance. Don't make this hurt anymore. Don't make mm-hmm. me wait anymore. I don't want to be anxious anymore. I don't want to be fearful anymore. Mm-hmm. So I kind of am asking him, hey, fix this real quick. But yeah. this this scripture reminds us that if I don't have that extended leg in between when something happens or I have a prayer request and he answers, there's no room for my faith. That's where mm-hmm. my faith is is put to work. And do I want to make him happy? Of course I want to make him happy. I want to please him. And so that requires me to to have that faith between the the initial, you know, situation, whatever it is, and his his answering it. Yeah, that's so good because it's in that waiting time is when Mm -hmm. we really grow. And you're right. I mean, it's all about our character growth and refining us so that builds up our faith and that we can really trust in the Lord uh, while we're waiting and resting in Him. And so I love that because that's where the growth happens. And Mm -hmm. I don't want to jump too far in advance, but one of my favorite devos that you wrote was running away from home in Mm -hmm. this book. And I know that touches on, you know, that disappointment in your circumstances. And so we'll go through that because I would love for you to share that little snippet. So let's hear more about you. I'm a, I'm a daughter of God. I'm a Christian. I, I came to know the Lord at the age of 19. I thought I was a Christian before that, but, um, but no, I didn't have a personal relationship with Christ. I've been married for, I think it's going to be 37 years this June. I have a daughter and a son and a son in law and a son in law and my uh, granddaughter who's seventeen months old who's the light of my life and everybody in the family's life. So mm-hmm. I'm an author. I knew I wanted to write since I was very young, maybe six, maybe six wow. years old. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and God prospered that and speaks to me in that and 
give you know all spiritual gifts are for the benefit of the body so he shares things with me that I can share in my writing that I can share with my sisters in Christ and and that's how the devos come about Mm, so good. Okay, so I love the how this whole devotional, I saw just this repeat pattern of you having these illustrations, or these analogies when it comes to trees and plants and flowers. Mm-hmm. I am a huge garden nut. I love all <laughs> flowers. <laughs> so like instantly, I mean, I'm just drawn to this. I love how you just entwine nature into God's presence and how we learn in life and our circumstances and stuff. So start us off with what led you to write this devotional. So I think what leads me to write all devotionals and then what gets focused in is I've got kind of as a grounding verse for that is Deuteronomy eleven nineteen, where he shares teach them, which is his words to your children, talking about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And to me, that just leads me to look for him everywhere and mm-hmm. every place that I am, not just on Sunday morning or not just at a... A praise thing or not just at a highlight in my life but I don't because I don't spend most of my life there I spend most of my life washing dishes or weeding or doing grocery shopping and so mm, yeah. to look for him in all those places and then to share them with our children in the carpool lane or when we're picking up toys that's what led to this most of our time is spent at home and mm-hmm. so to see him every day in the places where we dwell and that he's dwelling with us is really what drove this Devo. Mm, it's beautiful. It's so right. It's in our everyday tasks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that's where it happens. And is there ever a time that you felt far from God? Uh, do you have like a circumstance or a struggle that you can share with us that really ended up actually bringing you closer to the Lord? Yeah, I'll 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 open up that a little bit on seasons. I think yeah. one of the things is about seasons is that they show up and they show up regularly and that's really scriptural if you even go back to Ecclesiastes and some other things. There's a winter, there's a spring, there's a summer and there's a fall and that's not just the physical world, our circumstances and um you know relationships and everything follow that too. Where I get stuck is either when I think it's always going to be winter and things are never going to change and God's never going to help me and I'm not going to feel him. Or I think it's always going to be summer. Hey, this is a high point. I'm never going to face another roadblock or challenge again. Mm -hmm. Um, I think remembering that summer will lead to spring, I mean to fall, which will lead to winter, which leads to spring helps us know that whatever it is, this this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. I've had... um, I struggled with infertility. That was that was a very difficult season. My husband has had cancer twice and mm-hmm. he's still not completely clear from that. That those are difficult seasons and it's a, a persistent season. I'll tell you something really interesting. Mm-hmm. A couple of a couple of weeks ago I woke up in the middle of the night and uh couldn't go back to sleep and I told the Lord, I feel distant from you. I haven't I haven't had time to really read scripture. I've been so busy. I haven't done anything and I feel lonely for you kind of. Mm-hmm. Right away popped into my mind um I think it's Psalm twenty two thirteen. I should have written it down. But the Lord dwells, uh, the Lord God inhabits the praises of his people. Mm-hmm. And I think what he was telling me is, you know, just praise me right now. And I'm here mm-hmm. with you. I'll be living in that with you, right? Right at that moment. That's how close I am. Lord, you are magnificent. You are omnipresent. As soon as I mm-hmm. say that, I felt him there. Mm-hmm. So then I got up the next morning and I looked up in Blue Letter Bible, that verse, and sure enough, inhabits is the word dwell. And so wow. here we are right back to the the Devo he led me to write. And even when I was far from him, as I was working for him, he, he brought me right back. It's beautiful. Okay, let's talk about that little snippet, that Devo called Running Away From Home. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Can you, at the top of your head, share that little story? Yeah. Because I know you'll say it better than me. Yeah, for (laughs) sure. So. So when I was a little girl, I was, uh, I don't know, I might have been six or seven, I can't remember exactly, but I'd had a disagreement with probably my mother because she mm-hmm. was home and 
I wanted to do something and she didn't want to let me or she didn't help me and so I said fine then I'm gonna run away from home so I grabbed a brown paper bag and I threw I don't know some clothes in it Mrs. Beasley probably because she was my constant companion and I'm like well then I'm leaving so I opened the front door we had a front door and then a screen door in front of it I opened the front door and then I closed it behind me and stood kind of like a wedged between the two of them for a minute it was raining out and I can clearly remember okay now what are you gonna do right. where, where are you in your brown bag and Mrs. Beasley gonna actually head off to in this rain as right. a child it's not gonna happen so after yeah. a little bit I I you know hung my head I went back in the house I put my stuff away and you know I'm sure my, that my mother helped me at that time but it reminded me that sometimes I feel that way about God he's not fixing it I don't feel good he said no um, mm -hmm. you know there's all the things I don't understand why this was a good thing to say no and I I'm like then I then I'm not gonna run away from you then then you're not helping me what's the point mm -hmm. and it, it you know, but he, just like a good parent, he just helps me unpack all that, put it back, here's where you belong, no condemnation, no no harsh words, I know this is rough, you know, we're going to get through this together, it's going to be okay, I'm still attentive. Mm -hmm. And then it brought me back to Psalm 73, 23 to 25, which is, I'm always with you, you hold me by my right hand, you guide me with your counsel, and after you word, you will t afterward you will take me into glory whom have I in heaven but you and we don't have anybody but him he is our home mm -hmm. and and so we we can't run away from him but that's a good thing yeah yeah I mean it was just beautiful when I was reading it 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 brought me to a place when you know I was disappointed and I'm like what in the world and I love that you actually said didn't didn't he say the faithful prayers of a righteous person avail right. much? Yeah, uh -huh. in James five sixteen, you wrote, and and then we ask ourselves, like, was that I not righteous or faithful? Yep. What did I do right yep. to deserve this? This is kind of our knee jerk reaction to rejection or disappointment and things that we thought were gonna go this way, and you know, God's, you know making it a closed door or whatever it is and i love that you bring it back to well where am i gonna go without god yeah. you know and that he holds you and unpacks your bag and holds mm -hmm. you close but that you say it's not that it's fixed but that you don't know what it's gonna look like or how it's gonna work out but just know that he's holding you in his loving arms so um I just love that because it, it brings us back to what's important right <laughs> exactly and yeah. it's just like when you have a kid who's hurt and they're upset mm -hmm. and they go sit on the edge of their bed and if you're a parent or if you had a parent sits on the edge of the bed with you I'm sorry that hurt I know this isn't the way you wanted it to be everything's gonna be okay though and and that you know he's he's there to to do that with us wherever wherever you're sitting wherever you, you find yourself running away or, or drawing close I think that's one of the big hopes that I have for people who who read dwell is that they will see that he's he's always with them and in them and we're in him and um, that's the best comfort of all Mm hmm yeah well they're beautiful they cause an emotion it's relatable and I love the photography in it so if it features just incredible pictures so uh, which helps set this contemplated mood for mm -hmm. us readers so what are let's talk about prayer what are some other ways that it elevates us in prayer the book first of all when they put together those those photographs I cannot tell you how thrilled I was sometimes you know people because the, I wrote the book and then somebody else designed the interior yeah. and it was up to her to choose to choose the photos but mm -hmm. she just she just supernaturally picked exactly the right things to convey the mood of the words and to mm -hmm. to be partners and what that does yeah. is it brings another sense in so we've got the spiritual and emotional sense in the words and we've got the visual mm -hmm. and I like that if I'm having you know what we would call a quiet time or a time away that's you know dedicated to that devotion to add some other things for example I always drink 
jasmine tea, but that's the only time I drink jasmine tea. It's very floral smelling and it tastes good. And that adding that sensory ritual into my prayer time is like ushering me into a time that it's just it's just mm-hmm. me and God apart, sitting somewhere cozy, whether it's on your porch yeah. or in your um in your living room, wherever is a, a cozy place just for you to sit. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'd listened to a podcast, mm-hmm. one that said uh, in the past when people were setting up for Sabbath, they had to think ahead to do that. They had to buy their food and prepare their food and clean their house so that everything was ready for them to, to, to enjoy Sabbath mm-hmm. without working. But I think we need to do that for our devotional prayer time too. Set mm-hmm. it up. This is my set of time, set aside time. This is what I'm, you know, the tea mm-hmm. that I'm drinking or the coffee that I'm drinking. This is what I'm reading. Mm-hmm. This is where I'm going. Mm, such a great idea. I mean, we've, we're always told pick a place, you know, pick a mm-hmm. quiet place. But never did I really think about our senses of taste or smell Mm -hmm. you know like put on a a special candle yeah we're told you know maybe light a candle but to really get that special scent for that time with the lord what a great inspiration to do um okay so why in 2023 uh is the concept of home such an important one because i know it's all about your home throughout these devotionals, which I love. (laughs) Yeah, I think, you know, we've come out of a pandemic for the most part. And Mm -hmm. so all of us were home a lot. We were working at home. We were schooling at home, uh, doing things a lot at home. And I think on the one hand, that made us really appreciative of what our home environment could be, even if we hadn't been spending as much time in it, and we kind of got rooted. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we're now we're flying away again a little bit, and so I think it's important for us to take the best of the things that we learned in that stay-at-home era about um, drawing away and making mm-hmm. food together with our families, and not worrying so much if there's a mess, but we're all together having a good time, mm-hmm. making time to do board games. I mean, mm-hmm. people don't. Do, don't do that so much anymore mm-hmm. but just that our home is our sanctuary and then I think we can take that almost metaphorically we love to be at home home means so much and then we put that with God mm-hmm. are we at home with God is is he in our home one of the things that my family has come to do is not just ask the Lord to bless our meals but to invite him to dine with us Mm -hmm. so you know come and sit sit down with us Lord have it have a seat at our table be with Mm -hmm. us in this in this meal and Mm -hmm. um, recognize that he's he's in our home doing that too yeah more and more I mean we just find Jesus always breaking bread with people having Mm -hmm. meals and I think that's really becoming a prominent thing lately about us opening up our doors again in our home and inviting people over for these feasts and um, being intentional with that Mm -hmm. Um, just like how they did in the the early believers the early church time and um, it's just such a great way to fellowship and uh, spread the gospel that way while we're sharing a meal with someone and it's so great and uh, that brought me it's not a table uh, with chairs but I love the Devo that you shared about your couch and mm-hmm. I have a dog and you have a dog and how um, mine's not allowed on the couch but <laughs> I could just imagine how excited she would be if I just did a little pat next to me and she would in a heartbeat jump up and curl up next to me but um and how that's like how the Lord is doing with us it's just like you know come and sit with me I'm here already I'm just wanting you to draw close to me and it just brought this just vivid picture of Mm. God's hand just patting you know the seat the couch next to next to him saying come on over daughter I just want to spend time with you it's such a beautiful illustration 
yeah, he's there. He's waiting. He's excited. Yeah. He's he's provided the couch and he's provided his presence. And mm-hmm. um, you know, I just think we 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 forget about that. Life can become so busy. When you were talking about sharing and breaking bread yesterday, I was reading. My husband and I were reading in Acts, mm-hmm. and one of the last things that the Lord does before the ascension is he's eating with the disciples. It says he stayed, and that verse can be translated to as he ate with them. One of the last things he did before the crucifixion is he ate with the disciples I mean all of the places when Peter when he came back and Peter was not feeling so good about things there he was uh, fixing breakfast Mm -hmm. I just think it's good for us to remember that these these homey meal together Mm -hmm. with family and friend gatherings are places that we're really gonna sense this presence and um, yeah and if we open ourselves to that So good. I know. I'm just thinking about him feeding the 5,000. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always got food around. Yeah. And his miracles performed through mm-hmm. even meals. That's so great. Okay. So Dwell is rich with the scripture uh, passages. Uh, can you take us through a few that you use in the book that have a particular meaning to you? Yeah, I mean, there's a few, and I'll do them real quick so we can do a few. One of the ones that I love is Jeremiah 29.5, where, you know, the Israelites are in captivity, and he says, make a home here, plant a garden, do things. And I think that it's good for us to remember, no no matter where we find ourselves in the world, no matter what kind of... uh, financial situation is, what your home is, uh, where your home is, how often you have to move. He wants us to make it a home and a home that we feel comfortable in, a a place that he feels comfortable in. Uh, And I think that that sometimes people wait until they get their quote unquote forever home and then Mm -hmm. they're going to make it all. Then they're going to buy that couch they've been holding off for. (laughs) Then they're going to plant the garden. And I actually had a what I I thought was my forever home. It was my perfect home, everything I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then um, when my husband got cancer, it became clear that we were going to have to move for a number of reasons, treatment reasons. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I thought this was my forever home. And then he just gently said, you have one forever home and it's not here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, you're right. Exactly. How can and, I argue with that? <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? It wasn't even arguing. It was so yeah. freeing. It was like, right. whether I move you A, B, C, or D, have a good time, plant yeah. your gardens, have, have fun, but you don't need to get yourself all tied into how long you stay or how long you don't stay there. Cause you do have a forever home. I've got it for you. It, it, right. It's ready to go. So, um, mm, so that good. was a good thing. I, I also love that. I have a, a a Devo in there about nightlights and um, that we are nightlights, that people are provided nightlights for us, but that we as Christians are nightlife. We're shining a little light on the paths and we're bringing a little light into dark situations. And so John 1, 4 and 5, of course, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it is important to me. There are some dark areas for people to go through, but but we are we are still little lights. I I'm teaching my little granddaughter, you know, this little light of mine. Yeah. You know? And there's <laughs> so a lot cute. of good theology and encouragement in those kids' songs. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about your forever home, that's the same thing that happened to me. I was living in Southern California and we moved to Austin ten years ago. And I thought that home in California was the forever home. That was mm-hmm. my dream home and and you know god has other plans and Mm -hmm. it wasn't a health crisis but it was a financial crisis for us so uh he just kind of shows you like no it's me it's not the materialism superficial stuff it's eternal being in his presence that we have this eternal home so Totally. One of the things that reasons why I wanted to write this, we have so many things wrapped up in the in the word home. Dream home, you just said, forever home. Yeah. You know, grandma's house, mom's home, childhood home. Home has mm-hmm. such a an, an important um, meaning in all of our lives. And so when we feel uprooted for whatever reason, financial reasons, health reasons, whatever they are, you know, it feels a little um, uncertain. It feels a little fragile. So I just think if we can focus on the fact that he is the dream home. He's the forever home. He's got a forever home. He tells us he's he's got it for us. You know, he's mm. he's all of those things. It doesn't mean that we can't enjoy the homes that he provides for us here. Of of course we can. We just need to not put all of our hopes and security in that basket. Yes, yes. That's not our source. God's our only source. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 
For sure. He loves to teach us that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. You have this devotional. It encompasses uh, five senses and means of meditation and prayer. It's so beautiful. Um, You're someone who you call a foodie. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that uh, taste can bring us closer to Jesus? You know, first of all, it's interesting, you know, if you think of that verse, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. And I, I'm going to go back to my granddaughter again, but she's got a thing right now just because she's trying new food. She'll put a tiny pinky in and then she'll taste it and decide <laughs> if she wants the whole thing in her mouth. But, you know, God's kind of in, encouraging us to do that. Just give me, a, you know, give me mm. a try. Taste me for yourself. Don't listen to what a food reviewer has to say about me. Give mm. You, you try. It's Dip good. your pinky in. I am good. You know, try mm-hmm. it and see. And I think if we can take that, um, you know, perspective of how we look when, when we do enjoy a meal, especially a meal that someone has prepared specifically for us. I, I talk in the introduction about how we meet colleagues at a restaurant, but we invite friends and family into our homes. And God has prepared a life and a, a world specifically for us so Mm -hmm. to to taste and and see that is good it's it's as good as your mom's lasagna it's as good as the (laughs) highest paid you know highest cost um anniversary dinner you might have out Mm. um yeah and i think that that's that's the way to do it Mm, i love that let's talk about seasons i know you talked about it earlier in this episode what season of your life do you find the most difficult spiritually how do you adjust your prayer life in that season well if i was gonna tag it to physical world seasons probably fall fall Mm -hmm. to me is like I'm pretty sure all the happy go lucky. Plus, I live in the Pacific Northwest, so fall means what we call literally the big dark is coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I, I'm aware in fall that the big dark is coming, and, um, you know, I might need to put my head down for a little bit. I wrote a devotion in there about dormant seasons, and plants in a dormant season are not doing nothing. They're storing energy, they're growing roots, they're learning how to withstand wind. Um, and all of those things make them a stronger and a more fruitful mm-hmm. plant. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to remember that when, when fall is coming, that I, I might have to grit my teeth a little bit. I might have to just hold in place and, and be all right. But God always is going to bring me through to spring, and mm-hmm. I will be a stronger plant. I will bear more fruit, um, and yeah. the sunshine will come again. So. I think for anybody who's looking at a big dark, I think it's helpful to remember that the sun is coming. Mm, gosh, what a great reminder. Yeah, that was one of my favorites too. I love that. <laughs> I'm looking at the dormant season, a whole new light now. I'm like, yeah. they're actually doing something. Okay, great. They're not dead. <laughs> That's right. No, they're <laughs> <Yeah>. not. <laughs> There's life under there. There okay, is. Okay, so what tips do you have for making devotionals a regular part of uh, your daily prayer? Well, I think you have to find some devotionals that you really love because nobody wants to, right. you know, we'll, we'll find an excuse to not go to a book or to anything if, if we don't love it. So I end up looking for devotionals that I love and then I'm eager to spend t- to spend time with them. I do. I do set it up like a date. It's a date between me and the Lord in the same way that if my husband and I had a special date, I wouldn't let everybody, you know, wedge their way into it. If I did, it would be showing my husband in a way, hey, you're you're not as important as my phone or whatever was going on right there. So I think to just set aside a time, I think one of the reasons why I like writing short devotionals is because people can have a short period of time. They could even read them in the carpool line if that's when they have that moment or, you know, there's an old joke, you know, as soon as I'm in the bathroom, everybody needs me. But if you need to go there and open your Devo and sit on the floor or whatever yeah. in the bathtub, I know people who bring their Devos into the bathtub and that's their special time apart to do it. So to find a way to make it restful and relaxing and pleasurable and joyful, and then that's an appointment that you're going to meet. Yeah, I know. Whenever I get kind of, you know, mm, just kind of dull, I think, Mm -hmm. oh, 
I need to start looking into some stuff to spice up my spiritual walk, you know, whether yep. that's a new uh, Bible translation, you know, mm -hmm. going from NIV to NLT or the Passion Translation or grabbing a, a devotional book that's new to me. And it really just um, brings on a, a newness to your quiet time with him. And I love... Uh, the length of your devotions too. And because it doesn't need to be long and lengthy to make impact. And mm -hmm. um, your words just really draw the reader in and encourages them. It's relatable and it causes an emotion, whether something that's inspiring or motivating or you know calming and soothing by showing how much god loves us and that he's here always oh. with us and it's so great you're such a gifted writer i love it so would you finish us off with a takeaway for our friend here listening something they can ponder on or take action in yeah for sure so when i started thinking about dwell and i say that when we're at home with someone it's someone that we feel secure in, that we feel with peace, that we might laugh, that we learn from. So I want us to feel at home with God. Um, and hopefully the devotionals will help someone do that. And then you might think to yourself, how can I make my home and, and my heart and my day open to God dwelling in it? And do I recognize that he dwells in me, like Ephesians 3.17 and Hebrews 3.6a, and I dwell in him, which is 1 John 4.13. Do I see us? Do I see us? dwelling in each other him and me me and him and then do I take joy and comfort and pleasure from that and if not is there a way that I might I might start doing that more beautiful okay where can everyone grab their copy because I know they will want they are wanting one right now yeah you can yeah. grab a you can grab a copy at our daily bread who's the publisher you can grab a copy at Amazon at Christian book distributors at Barnes and Noble I mean any place that you would normally reach out to get the book they're just I love the full color illustrations I can't imagine anyone would be disappointed with spending some time with that it just will be a treat I think for them to spend time in that with those with those pictures yeah it's a treat for me so I know it will be for our friend here that's listening mm -hmm. thank you so much Sandra for coming on here and sharing about this wonderful beautiful devotional called dwell 90 days at home with god the link to purchase is below this episode in the show notes friend thank you for coming on here thank you thank you so much for listening today and i trust that god has encouraged you through this story did you know this podcast is on youtube Hop on there and subscribe and you can see a live recording of each episode. And for more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com. That's J-A-Y-M-E elizabeth.com. And let's connect beyond this podcast by going to my Instagram handle, Jamie Elizabeth, She Speaks Life, or Facebook. Until next time, my friend, I hope God reveals himself through your own life story.